a group of Chicago Public Library staff members select the best books for kids, teens, and adults. Here are the 2020 Best of the Best Books for Teens chosen by our teen librarian. Hello, my name is Jaime. I'm a teen librarian at the Chicago Public Library, and I'm also a hopeless romantic. Did 2020 have your love life in a rut? Well, I'm here to offer you six tips to platonic relationship success in How Do We Relationship. Tip number one, find your romantic best friend. In How Do We Relationship by Temi Fu, freshman college student Miwa captures the attention of everyone when she enters a room. Miwa identifies as lesbian and knows it's nothing to be ashamed of, but she's too shy to be out. Things change when she meets outgoing Saeko. They become friends, start a band, and hang out as much as possible. When Saeko asks Miwa out, Miwa accepts, but wonders if things are moving too fast. Their journey includes coming out to friends, first kisses, public displays of affection, sex, and of course, many compromises. Overall, this manga is a self-discovery of a pragmatic friendship turned to romance. Tip number two, the toxic has to go. Not so pure and simple by Lamar Giles. Dell is obsessed with asking out his longtime crush, Kiera. He accidentally joins a church purity pledge in a help me get the girl kind of situation. Dell is also the only person in the purity pledge allowed to take sex ed, begins to get the answers many of his peers seek. Through his time at the church and in sex ed, Dell begins to reflect on his own toxic behavior towards women and whether it is too late to take responsibility and change his own ways. Tip number three, turn on the charm. Charming as a Verb by Ben Philippe is a story about Henry Haltingwanger, a first generation American, son of Haitian immigrants, star debater, with a successful dog walking business. He is a master of charming everyone except Connie Troy, who is immune to his charm and discovers the secrets to his dog walking success. She in turn blackmails him to help her learn his charming ways. In the long run, they both discover they're not so bad to be around and maybe, just maybe, count on each other as more than friends. This black led YA rom com is perfect for those experiencing the stress of last years of high school debate club fanatics, and of course dog lovers. Tip number four, be your true self. Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar is an own voices queer contemporary story about Felix Love, a 17 year old black trans guy who is struggling to make life changing decisions in his last year of high school. Felix yearns to find love, but is afraid there is no one out there for him. To top it off, he's dealing with someone who has exposed his dead name and photos of him pre-transition. Felix sets out to find a culprit and plans a catfish scheme to reveal who committed this transphobic act. But the plan begins to spiral off course and Felix ends up in a quasi love, love triangle that unfolds throughout the story. Tip number five, be the superhero you've always meant to be. You Brought Me the Ocean by Alex Sanchez is a coming out romance and origin story of Aqualad. Jake Hyde believes his mom is hiding some truths, especially when she doesn't like to talk about his strange birthmarks or his father's death. His best friend Maria wants them to stick to their college plan, but Jake has something else in mind and is hiding it from people he cares most. Things get complicated when Jake begins to discover his identity and his attraction to free-spirited, blue hair and captain of the swim team, Kenny Lou. This graphic novel is beautifully illustrated with shades of blue, orange, and lots of action scenes. Don't miss out on the small cameos of Superman and Aquaman. Last tip, tip number six. All good things are worth waiting and fighting for. Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Osman. Charlie Springs had a terrible year. I'm sure many of us can relate. He was outed and bullied at his old boys British grammar school. But this year's different. Charlie is owning his identity out and proud and has started a friendship with Nick Nelson, a popular rugby player who isn't a jerk. As their friendship strengthens, Nick begins to reflect on why he can't get Charlie out of his head. The art style is simple and matches the tone of the story. You'll fall in love with scenes of them texting, hanging out, and an epic first kiss. I hope you find these tips of use or at least enjoy a good romance read. Whether you're a teen or an adult, you never lose that need to feel like you belong somewhere and that you've found your people. The characters in these stories are able to do just that, 
even if it's in ways and places they didn't expect. BL Metamorphosis by Kaori Surutani. After meeting in a bookstore, 75-year-old Yuki and high school student Yurara bond over their fondness for boys' love manga. Soon, they meet others who share their fandom, and they discuss the joy they find in reading in this light-hearted series opener. This sweet story of an intergenerational friendship reminds us that we are never too old to find new friends and new interests. A Man and His Cat by Umo Sakurai There's not much to look forward to when you're an almost one-year-old cat who is not cute at all, waiting to be adopted at a pet shop. One day, a lonely older man changes the poor kitty's fate and adopts him. Adorable and brief vignettes of the two learning to live with one another will warm your heart, from Fukumaro's first bath, which didn't go very well, to laundry and Fukumaro sitting on the neatly folded clothes. Their humorous and endearing life together is a story we can all use right now. What I Carry by Jennifer Longo When Muriel turns 18, she'll age out of the foster care system, and she's determined to to carry zero emotional attachments into adulthood with her. After all, her only constant has been inconsistency, and her number one rule is to not get attached. Of course, life has other plans for her as she starts working at Salishwood, a nature preserve on an island near Seattle, making friends and growing close to her last foster parent, Francine. This book explores the power of relationships with nuance and compassion. Spy X Family by Tatsuya Endo To fulfill his mission of spying on a corrupt political leader, top secret agent Twilight must find a wife and child to enroll at an elite private school. In this hilarious manga series opener, he gets a lot more than he bargained for with expert assassin wife, Yor, and telepathic daughter, Anya. Readers will be happy to know they can get their hands on volumes 2 and 3 already as well. Dragon Hopes by Jean Nguyen Yang This is a sports story written by someone who is way more interested in superheroes, but it actually works. Our heroes are the Dragons, a high school basketball team from Oakland, California, and they are fighting for the state championship. We meet the coach and the students on the team and get a bit of their backstory. Also woven into the story is the history of basketball from its invention and the sexism and racism that players have faced. Part autobiographical, Yang embeds himself into the story and explains his writing process making this quite a unique read for sports and non-sports fans alike. Where We Go From Here by Lucas Roca Ian has just received a positive HIV diagnosis. Enrique has been living with HIV for the past three years. Victor was dating Enrique until he found out about his HIV status, but to his relief, he tested negative. These three young queer men from Brazil grapple with these results and help each other come to terms with what life will look like now not always in the smoothest way possible. Turbulent romance, devoted friendships, and found families make this educational and moving story an exceptional debut. You Know I'm No Good by Jessie Ann Foley. Mia is what most people would label as a troubled teen. She gets bad grades, drinks, and sleeps around. The last straw is when she punches her stepmom in the face. This gets her sent away to a strict therapeutic boarding school. While there, she bonds with the other girls, who are each facing their own traumas, as she navigates her past and decisions she has made or thought she has made, and the stigma that follows. This story will resonate to many teen girls. Mia's funny and witty, but in clear denial and pain. Get your literary passports ready, because today's in-flight entertainment is beyond borders. Stories that reach beyond geography and nationality. From Elizabeth Acevedo, author of The Poet X, Clap When You Land is about two sisters who live in two different countries, neither of whom knows about the other's existence. When their father's plane crashes on his trip to the Dominican Republic, the two sisters discover each other's identities while processing their own grief. Parachutes by Kelly Yang refers to people like Claire, a rich Chinese exchange student whose parents sent her to California for high school. It has all the glamour and excess of crazy rich Asians, but it also addresses Me Too and the real-life struggles beneath the opulence. 
Illegal continues the story of Sara and Emiliano from Francisco X. Stork's 2017 novel, Disappeared. Forced to flee Mexico due to Sarah's research into the abduction of young women, the two siblings arrive in America. But even though they're a country away from the initial investigation, they soon to begin to realize they're even closer to the center of it all. In Jenny Torres Sanchez's We Are Not From Here, three friends must brave an unimaginably treacherous journey from Guatemala to the United States. To trust anyone but themselves could result in kidnapping and death. And yet, to complete the journey without seeking the help of others is an absolute impossibility. Alatsoe by Darcy Little Badger doesn't transcend geographic boundaries. Rather, its titular character has the ability to transcend the physical world and the spiritual world. This is an ability passed down by the Lipin Apache women of her family. After her cousin dies under very suspicious circumstances, Alatsoe must dive deep into the spirit realm to unearth the secrets of his murder. All the Days Past, All the Days to Come completes Mildred Taylor's saga made famous in the Newbery Medal winner Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry, about the Logan family of the Mississippi. Cassie Logan lives through a series of events like the Great Depression, most of World War, and a lifetime of racism that the family confronts. This novel follows Cassie as she experiences segregation, discrimination, and taking a stand to do what is right. Kent State by Deborah Wiles. What happened on May 4, 1970 in Kent State? 50 years ago, four students lost their lives in an Ohio University campus, told in multiple voices from various vantage points, protesters, guardsmen, townies, and students. This historical debatable conversation aims to inform readers of our rights as citizens of the United States, how leaders of, of government abuse power and the importance of our freedom to speak and to be heard, and above all, to listen to others. The Blossom and the Firefly by Sherry L. Smith. Hannah, a young teenage girl from Japan, faces death after being buried alive during a bomb raid. This near-death experience has left her uh, a changed girl. When Hannah meets Taro, a talented violinist who is called to duty as a kamikaze pilot, her perception on life starts to pivot. Two young teens from differing lifestyles are brought together through song. Torn apart by World War II, Hannah and Taro find hope in the face of tragedy. Displacement by Kiko Hughes. Kiko, a teenager on vacation in San Francisco, is suddenly transported into the past and displaced in the 1940s Japanese-American internment camp alongside her late grandmother. Stuck back in time, Kiko experiences firsthand how Japanese-Americans were denied civil liberties and suffered many atrocities as they worked together in order to survive. This graphic novel informs readers about the importance of Remembering our country's history, no matter how harsh they are or how they may taint the image of this country. Stories need to be told to prevent history repeating itself. Atomic Women by Roseanne Montillo. Atomic Women is a quick introduction and tribute to all the women who were directly involved in the discovery of the elements that led to the creation of the atomic bomb. This biographical scientific journey explores the roles and contributions that some women made while enduring discrimination from their male counterparts during a time when the race to win a war was at stake. A brief insight to some known and unknown women who were passionate and dedicated to the field of science and whom were determined to see their ambitions come to fruition. Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. Yadriel is a brujo, but his family has trouble seeing him that way. Not because they don't believe in magic, his whole Latinx family performs magic daily, but because they can't accept his true gender, refusing to see Yadriel for who he is. When his cousin is murdered, Yadriel accidentally summons the ghost of Julian, his school's resident bad boy, which means his to-do list gets a lot longer. 
help Julian tie up his mortal loose ends and release him to the other side, convince Yadriel's family he can do brujo magic, and solve his cousin's murder. Probably not in that order. At once funny and touching, this book is for anyone who has struggled to find themselves in fantasy novels. I Had That Same Dream Again by Yoru Sumino. An unhappy girl who engages in self-harm, a high schooler ostracized by her classmates, and an old woman looking to live out her twilight years in peace. What could three such different people have in common? That's exactly what Nanoka wants to find out when her teacher asks her to define happiness and what it means for her. Nanoka tries to find her place in the world by exploring her relationships with these three strangers, and through them comes to know herself. Red Hood by Alana K. Arnold You are alone in the woods. Your hands are empty, and the wolf is angry. Alana K. Arnold's latest novel is Buffy meets feminist Little Red Riding Hood. Bisu has inherited her grandmother's gift. With her monthly blood comes the power to hunt werewolves, sexual predators that prey on women and girls. Like all good fairy tales, it's a gift and a curse, one that's deeply connected to Bisu's past. Her story takes her through the woods to grandmother's house, and she invites you to come along with her, if you dare. Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifweko. Raised by an absent mother, she's only ever known by the name The Lady. Tarasai is bound by ancient magic to murder the crown prince once she gains his trust. Her resistance to this destiny launches a story that subverts every fantasy trope and narrative assumption along the way, imagining a world built on mutual care that is as radical as it is enticing. This West African-inspired fantasy is literal black girl magic, with rich world building and a story that never did what I expected it to do. The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu. This book is about Nanarol Mozart. Yep, you guessed it, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's older sister. Nanarol is every bit as talented as her little brother, but has one major problem. It's 18th century Europe, and she's, you know, a girl. Then a mysterious stranger from a magical land appears and offers to fulfill Nanarol's wish to be remembered forever. But what will this magic cost, and is Nanarol willing to pay it? A brilliant historical fantasy of music, magic, and the unbreakable bond between a brother and sister, this book is everything you expect from New York Times bestselling author Marie Lu. Dark and Deep is Red by A. M. McLemore. In the summer of 1518, a strange sickness sweeps through Strasbourg, Germany. Women dance in the streets, some until they fall down dead. The cause? Witches. Or so the townspeople think. 500 years later in the U.S., a pair of red shoes seal to Rosella all of his feet and make her dance uncontrollably, pulling her toward a boy whose family was blamed for the fever five centuries before. Together, the two stories tell of love and loss, persecution and resilience, and the beauty of knowing who you are and where you come from. Hardwired by Len Vlachos. What if your absent father left behind a trail of clues for you to follow? What if, once you solved the puzzle, you discovered that nothing was what you thought? What if you learned that you're the first fully aware artificial intelligence in the world? An experiment, a science project, and not actually what anyone else would call human. What would that mean? What would you do? When all this happens to Quinn, he finds allies and plots to escape from the scientists studying him. But what does freedom mean for someone who may not even be truly alive? Nominated for the Morris Award, this debut novel by Len Vlachos asks big questions about humanity and freedom and wonders if those words really mean what we think they do. Oh, these books. They will make you feel things. The following titles offer us glimpses into each of these characters' unique tragedy. Because, hey, we all have them. While calling out that without hope, we're lost. We don't have to carry these things alone. It's all about finding the light. The Dark Matter of Mona Star by Laura Lee Gulledge. Geek out with the creative Mona and explore her dark matter, aka what she labels her depression, in attempts to better understand herself. Mona finds hope through therapy, art, and friendships, while learning to advocate for her own needs in this fresh look at managing mental health. Dancing at the Pity Party by Tyler Fetter. Chicago and Tyler Fetter transforms the piercing experience of joining the Dead Moms Club losing her mom to cancer in this hilariously surreal graphic novel memoir. Their heart will break with all the post-death bursts that Tyler draws so well. This is a complete laugh-cry situation that encompasses grief at every level. 
all the fields, bring on the tissue train, and surround yourself with faculty. A Map to the Sun by Sloan Leung. A wash in gorgeous colors. This book captures that space where it feels like everything happened and then nothing did. A slice of life into the world of messy friendships of a basketball team. Growing up and struggles on and off the court. The Lucky Ones by Liz Lawson. The lone survivor of a school shooting that took the lives of her twin brother and friends, May is angry and destructive, dealing slash not dealing with PTSD and extreme guilt. She then meets Zach, who is dealing with his own issues, as his lawyer mom is defending the teen shooter. Both their lives are changed as they learn how to process together. Tigers Not Daughters by Samantha Mabry. The Torres sisters, Jessica, Iridan, and Rosa, are consumed by grief after the death of their eldest sister, Anna. Haunted by the memory of Anna, their despotic and tyrannical father's needy behavior, while also processing their grief, the Torres sisters seek to escape their mundane life for something better. Mabry's retelling of Shakespeare's King Lear explores magical realism, trauma, family bonds, Mexican-American culture, female power, and the powerful bond of sisterhood. Breath Too Late by Rocky Cowan. An unflinching story similar to Gail Foreman's If I Stay, but our main character, Ellie, has already died by suicide. Ellie examines the pieces of her life, the aftermath of her actions in her home and school, and realizes exactly what she's left behind. She now sees that life has moments of beauty, even when other moments sucker punch the hope bloody. She reflects on the abuse and depression that led to her decision in this unflinching story that includes resources for those who are struggling with suicidal thoughts. This was a rising sadness, and you'll cry at the end at all the choices Ellie had left but could no longer see. Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. A different kind of ghost story. The role of trauma here is depicted by the ghosts we carry around with us. A product of the foster care system, we meet Mila. As she is about to age out of the foster system, she finds a position as a teacher at a farm that's home to ghosts, a.k.a. the stories of over 40 foster kids throughout the years. Mila soon realizes that she has to face her own ghost from the past in order to move forward as a member of her new chosen family. All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson In his memoir, All Boys Aren't Blue, activist George M. Johnson reflects on his experiences growing up as a young queer black man in New Jersey. Trigger warning. He writes about homophobia, sexual abuse, and toxic masculinity, but he tells these stories as a gateway for LGBTQIA plus people to tell their truth. The Black Flamingo by Dean Ada. Growing up in England, Michael doesn't feel black, Greek, or queer enough to fit in anywhere until he goes to university and joins the drag society. That's where he finds his voice performing as the magical Black Flamingo. The beautiful poems in this novel will not only encourage readers to shine as their authentic selves, but they will also encourage them to Google all of the references to important figures in LGBTQ history. Everybody Looking by Candace Ilo. Ada is a Nigerian-American teen dealing with her mom's addiction and trying to cope with the painful memories of being sexually abused as a child. By pursuing her love of dance as a college freshman, she starts a journey towards empowerment. Written in powerful and unflinching verse, this novel will capture your heart. Flamer by Mike Curato. In the past, Aiden has always enjoyed the outdoor activities at Boy Scout camp, but during the summer before his freshman year of high school, he's having a tough time. He gets bullied by his fellow campers for being chubby, Filipino, and gay, and on top of that, he knows his Catholic church doesn't approve of anyone being gay. The gorgeous graphic novel shows how Aiden learns to accept himself as he comes to terms with his romantic feelings for his best friend, Elias. The New David Espinoza by Fred Aceves. What would you do if a mortifying video of you getting hit by the school's worst bully goes viral? If you're David Espinoza, you spend the summer lifting weights, obsessing over your healthy diet, and taking steroids to gain muscle. This novel tackles the often overlooked topic of male body dysmorphia, showing that it's not just girls who feel extreme pressure to look a particular way. Self-Love Revolution by Virgie Tovar 
Have you ever wondered why we're still hanging on to outdated, rigid ideas of what it means to be beautiful? Self-Love Revolution explains the connections between fat phobia and racism and other ways to promote body positivity. The author's laid-back conversational vibe makes this book relatable and easy to read for all young women. Unscripted by Nicole Kronzer. Fans of stand-up comedy will root for Zelda in the debut novel Unscripted. Zelda is thrilled when she's accepted to the varsity improv team at the Rocky Mountain Theater Arts Camp. But then she feels completely bummed out by the rampant sexism of her male teammates. The girls in the Gilda Radner cabin have to learn to stand up for themselves without losing their sense of humor. Did you go to any protests in 2020? If you want some historical context for the recent Black Lives Matter marches, Into the Streets covers all of the important protests in American history between 1492 and 2018. You can learn about Martin Luther King's March on Washington, the Stonewall Riots, the Women's March, and more. The very short chapters and abundant color photos will hold your interest better than boring history books. Proving that great things do come in small packages, the Pocket Change Collective series of short but sweet nonfiction books cover a wide range of relevant topics, including gender identity, strengthening the queer community, climate change, the plastics crisis, racial injustice, growing up in foster care, and activism through art. These heartfelt manifestos will capture your attention better than any textbook and will inspire you to take action. You probably know Evie Zaboy from her excellent novels Pride and American Street. This time, she has teamed up with Youssef Salam to tell the story of Amal, a black teen who's wrongly convicted of a crime and incarcerated at 16. Based on Salam's experiences as a member of the Central Park Five, this novel in verse shows how art can transform tragedy into hope. If you're looking for inspiration to put pen to paper, check out Zeta Elliott's poems that reflect on the Say Her Name campaign, the Black Lives Matter movement, and the continuing violence against black women in America. Using poems by Lucille Clifton, Nikki Giovanni, Audre Lorde, and Phyllis Wheatley as jumping off points, she sends loving positive messages to black girls, women, and femmes. The colorful illustrations by Love is Wise of black women among the moon and stars offer comfort and hope in bleak times. Jason Reynolds is known for the no-nonsense, sarcastic tone he uses in all of his books, and he brings that unique voice to his remix of Ibram X. Kendi's National Book Award winner, Stamped from the Beginning. Stamped guides readers through the whole history of races and anti-racist ideas from America's beginning to today. It's a refreshingly honest book that's the polar opposite of a textbook, and readers of any age can learn a lot from it. Meet Marva, who's waited all of her life to vote in her first election, and Duke, who wants to vote but seems to have the worst luck ever at his polling place. In The Voting Booth, Brandy Colbert shows her knack for taking timely topics, in this case, the barriers that keep people of color and the elderly from casting their ballots while still keeping her books thoroughly entertaining. She manages to turn a clever meet cute into a modern romance that won't nauseate you. Thanks for watching. You can find more best of the best lists at shypublib.org slash teen best of the best and look for the hashtag CPL best wherever you enjoy social media. Happy reading and see you next year.